Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships. Today I've got a game for you courtesy of the old derps and he is in the Kutuzov and if you're thinking hang on a minute it's not the old derps it's ye oldie derps well you'd be wrong because and this is just one of those random bits of information that's in my head that I know the reason why Sometimes you will see the written as if it, uh, well, it looks like it should be said ye, is uh, to do with the fact that when printing presses were first introduced into Britain, they didn't have the letter thorn. And you might be wondering, what's a thorn? Well, it's a letter that basically isn't used anymore, and uh, it was on its way out anyway, I believe, but... Pretty much only us here in uh, Britain and the Scandinavians were really using it. And so when printing presses came over from places like France and the Netherlands, they didn't have this letter because it wasn't in their Latin alphabet. And so printers would substitute the letter Y for the letter Thorn. And hence that's why you see ye instead of the. It just means the, basically. So, anyway, yes, that had nothing to do with warships whatsoever, that's just the thing I happen to know. So, the Kutuzov, tier 8 premium Soviet cruiser, and it's rather good. It has the ability to smoke, it's got very long range, it's got some of the best AA at uh, tier 8 for a, a cruiser, and all in all, it's a fairly nice machine. And I think the reason it's a fairly nice machine is because, apart from the Chapayev, there's not really much else that's like it. It's got something that sets it slightly aside. And the reason why I mention this, I'm, I'm going to have a brief aside about the British cruisers. Well, a lot of people weren't particularly happy that the British cruisers were basically going to be a line of more or less Kutuzovs, where they could smoke and uh, just fire and uh, be invisible except well not everybody was unhappy about it some people quite liked the idea and some of the the people that tested them quite liked the idea and although I wasn't one of them I don't think the ability to smoke is it, it's not like it's some almighty power because when you're the size of a cruiser and this goes for the Kutuzov as well and to a lesser extent the flint the flint's a smaller ship but it's still a cruiser you can just fire into the smoke and have a much better chance at actually hitting somebody when they're in a cruiser, as opposed to trying to hit a destroyer blind in smoke. So it's not like it's a superpower exactly, but personally I still didn't like the play style. And actually Wargaming seemed to, uh, like the, the super testers and the, the other people that have played these seem to have been of a divided enough opinion that Wargaming has taken them away to uh, rebalance. This is why I'm talking about them a little bit here, because the cruisers, as I played them in their first iteration, uh, are probably not going to be what we'll get in whatever iteration they're being tested in now. Anyway, that was, again, nothing to do with really anything. Well, th this was slightly more relevant to the actual, uh, to the actual game, though. <laughs> I mean, it had something to do with World of Warships. It wasn't just a a bit of uh, uh, history to do with printing and and uh, uh, letters of the English alphabet. So he's already managed to uh, Derps has already managed to do a bit of damage. He's set a bunch of fires already, and this being an old replay, the damage uh, counter from a mod only counts shell damage and torpedo damage. It doesn't count any kind of ticking damage. So bear that in mind. He's also had a, one really nice salvo of AP against that New Orleans, so Derps is clearly a player that knows not to just completely ignore his AP shells, even though 6-inch AP, you really need a flat broadside cruiser to get the best use of it, and the moment that New Orleans started angling, he went back to the HE very sensibly, but uh, no, he's, he's queuing it up again because, again, flat broadside cruiser, potentially. You can also use it against battleship superstructures, but it's a little more hit and miss, so to speak. Anyway, this guy's got a bit of angle, but that was still a fairly nice salvo there. And I think really at this point, 
he's just, uh, Dobbs is just trying to take this guy down as fast as possible because he knows a, a Natago, if played well, can be a dangerous opponent. He's got good torpedoes, a very good torpedo spread. You really don't have to uh, turn your ship around in the same way that you do with the, the regular cruisers. And, of course, he's got nasty 8-inch guns as well, except he seems to be mostly firing HE shells, so that's altogether less dangerous as far as Derps is concerned. He's also, of course, got this Turpitz here as well, giving him some uh, uh, backup. Or, well, that's probably the wrong way to look at it. They're both firing at this guy, let's let's put it that way. And for some reason that Atago had slowed down, not sure if he'd taken an engine critical on it, just hadn't noticed, but him slowing down meant that he was easily um, within... Uh, what I don't know what I'm going for there, it's late, and this is my nth attempt at recording this. He sailed right into a torpedo by slowing down, is what I was vaguely trying to stab in the direction of there. Derps puts out more torps of his own, and in theory these do have the range, but they aren't going to hit, I don't think. And uh, he also has laid down some smoke, and I thought he was going to maybe stop and fire from the smoke, and then he decided not to. And it's a good thing he decided not to, because, surprise Hatsuharu. And although this is a little bit risky, because at this range um, he's going to have a slightly harder time dodging if the Hatsu's put torps out, but the first lot went out against the Turpits, and there's the second lot, so yeah, this Hatsu's dead. Completely dead. Three salvos, and he's basically gone. Now, I'm not quite sure what the, the Hatsu was thinking there, if he maybe didn't realize Derps was here, although surely he would have. Derps was very much spotted. Uh, perhaps he thought Derps would just keep going round and he'd have the element of surprise. Maybe he didn't realize Derps was turning. Or maybe he was just so fixated on trying to get the Turpits that he didn't notice. Anyway, the Turpits went down and now um, it's up to Derp to uh, try and defend this cap. And he has got some cruisers around helping him, but there's an Alba that's very low health, and the Cleveland has actually run aground, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the health of the Cleveland is either, but he seems to have uh, um, scraped along an island a bit there. So more torps out, and uh, you don't want to neglect them in the cutters off. You don't quite have the arcs of the Targo, but they're still not bad. And although the first wave has missed, this lot might might do a little bit better. Maybe. I can't remember offhand what damage these torpedoes do, but, you know, they're torpedoes, and just even if he can get some flooding, even if the torps themselves don't do a lot, then that alone is quite powerful. And he only does hit one, but uh, I think he is actually getting some flooding damage there. So the Alba's dead, the Cleveland's dead, Colorado is running for cover behind the island, and... Apart from these two, um, there's really only their carrier left. Everybody else has died. Now, the enemy team isn't faring much better. It's uh, the New Mexico division, uh, Kiev, and another New Mexico all the way on the other side of the map. But this is going to be a bit of an uphill struggle. Now, he is tier 8 versus tier 6s, and the fact that it's these tier 6s means that... It's, uh, well, I just came almost, almost to the point of flooding out there, but he didn't. Not Colorado, not Colorado, the New Mexico. But, uh, yeah, the 14-inch the guns shouldn't overpen as easily as the 15-inch guns of, um, or 16-inch guns of, of some of the other Tier 6 and 7 battleships might do. And of course, a lot of the Tier 8 battleships have got uh, 15 and 16-inch guns. So... Yeah, if he keeps his angle in towards, he can at least, in theory, get some bounces, and in fact, does. So one of the New Mexicans had his turrets around the wrong way. That guy started repairing, but uh, Derps' torpedoes aren't going to miss, and his torps on the other side are very nearly back as well. However, that guy's rear turrets aren't going to take too long to come round on him. Also, having said Colorado before when I didn't mean to, the Colorado has in fact also died, so it's just Derps and the carrier. This has become even more of a tall order. 
And it's almost, I mean, there's still that New Mexico left, but it's almost the Kiev that's the bigger threat. The enemy carrier is also still alive, however, it's a tier 6 carrier, and given that the Kutuzov does have good anti-aircraft capabilities, that shouldn't be much of a problem. So yeah, it's the Kiev, it's the Kiev that is absolutely the main thing he has to worry about right now. Not so much because of his torpedoes, because at tier 7, the, uh, the Kiev still has those puny 4km but very fast torpedoes. No, it's the guns, the guns on the Kiev are fairly lethal. You can also see there that that last remaining New Mexico isn't particularly healthy, but still has more than enough to cause some issues. Now, the fact that the Kiev is also able to keep his distance, I mean, that was two hits landed right there, but the Kutuzov's got a longish shell travel time, and it's longish more because of the long range than anything else. But that is definitely an issue when you're trying to hit destroyers at those longer ranges. For, for engagements like the... Uh, was it Hatsa Haru earlier? Basically, point blank, you can just murder people in destroyers with these guns. But at longer ranges, it becomes a lot tougher, especially if people have the speed and the maneuverability to dodge. So they're severely down on points. He's probably not going to get a lot of help from the carrier, although the carrier could, at the very least, potentially spot this Kiev. However, he seems disinclined to do so, and to be fair to him, there is still an enemy carrier around. Possibly he was thinking he would have a go at sinking the enemy carrier, or maybe even trying to get the New Mexico. But, given that it is a uh, fighter independence, he's got two lots of uh, fighters and one squad of dive bombers, his ability to do damage is pretty limited. So the really the best thing he could do right now is try and spot that Kiev, but he's not. So that makes life a little bit awkward. So the New Mexico, however, is very definitely uh, lit up. And uh, as long as he can keep fairly bow forward to this guy and abuse the fact that he has a much faster reload than a battleship. Yeah, he can just angle in when the New Mex is firing and then angle out to get his turrets on position when uh, the New Mex is uh, not firing, which he will be doing the majority of the time. So just like that, shots like that basically. However, that's an unwelcome bit of information. The Kiev has really uh, relocated to the north and so Derps is now in the unenviable position where he can either turn more towards the Kiev and expose himself to the New Mex, or keep sailing like this and potentially expose himself to the Kiev. But I suspect the Kiev must be behind an island right now because he only fired off a couple of salvos. He's not continuing to fire. So it takes a couple on the nose and that's fine. Again, 14 inch guns, so these ones are bouncing. I suspect 15 inch guns wouldn't. But then the Kiev having come round the, high, the island, evidently, I almost said Highland there, um, it gets a bit, like, it's, that's one jumble that makes more sense in my head because I live in the bit of Scotland known as the Highlands and Islands, so I'm used to those words being together. Anyway, never mind. On with the show. So, yeah, fire on the New Mexico. In fact, probably multiple fires at this point, and he just needs to keep hammering this guy. He's taken a bit more damage, but he's not got a lot of health left at this stage. And he's going to burn out. There we go. And that was a Kraken. Five kills. He's doing his absolute utmost to try and bring this back. Because most of his team didn't manage to have that much of an impact. And uh, it's, it's one of those... Because this is a domination game, it's not even just that uh, they died more rapidly than the enemy team, it's that the enemy team was able to keep control of cap circles for longer. So if we've skipped forward a little bit here. Rather than go after the Kiev, Derps decides to actually try and cap C. However, the Kiev is now capping A. And the carrier, I think, does do a little bit of spotting in this late stage of the game, but I don't know if it's intentional spotting or not. And it's really all too late at this stage anyway. We're down to the last 
30 seconds or less and uh, this is it they have more points we're going to run out of time and despite an absolutely valiant uh, effort that's a word valiant effort on Derps's part um, it's not going to be a win sadly that's going to be the ball game as they say over in the colonies However, that doesn't stop him trying just a couple of last salvos at that Kiev, but uh, of course it, it wouldn't do anything. So, 179,000 damage done, and he actually made a cool million credits. I've only seen this once before with uh, a game from a while ago, with Mr. Conway in the Tirpitz. I don't know if you remember that one, but basically sailing between multiple battleships and unleashing broadsides of torpedoes on both sides and getting a ridiculous amount of credits at the end of it. So, yeah. So you can see, top of his team, um, he did a fair whack of damage with just the guns alone. Torpedoes, nearly 60k, and another 48k from fire damage. And, uh, well, actually not all of it fire damage, some of it was flood damage. But, uh, yeah, it just, it all racked up. And I don't know if... Some of that million credits was maybe from a mission, or if this was just from having done so much damage, because 180k is quite a lot. But either way, I mean, that was impressive to have lost and still be the top score of either team, because there's no... Um, it's not like World of Tanks, where if you get one of a certain number of medals, the game treats your XP as though you've won as a kind of compensation. It's like, okay, you've managed a top gun or, or a high caliber or something like that. You know, you've performed well in this battle. So even though your team lost, you still get the, the same amount of XP as if you won. I don't think that applies to warships. To my knowledge, it doesn't. So this was just from his sheer performance that he was able to, to get that result. And Lord knows what it would have been if he'd managed to win um, 3,000 plus XP, almost certainly. So there you go, a bit of Kutuzov action, and it was really thinking about the British cruisers that made me think, okay, let's let's look through, and, uh, you know, there was this Kutuzov game. So this, this is why I picked this one out. Although it, it just, you know, it was a good game anyway, and, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that uh, also is a reason why I picked it out. I don't want to be make it be like uh, that was the only thing in my head when I... Uh, when I was looking through. So anyway, enough rambling. Um, yeah, this is this has been, I'm having another couple of days when videos are just turning out to be very difficult. A couple of days, weeks, years. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, hopefully you'll forgive me if this was a bit more rambly than usual. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. And if you have, you can hit the like button. You can leave any comments below. You can uh, sub to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, stay tuned for more.